ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cold Open here on Past Tisha of Skin. Today we're checking out Steep Beta on the PlayStation 4. Yes, I recorded this footage with my first initial reactions, and the mic was off, and it drove me around the bend there now. This game is really fun. I wanted to actually make sure to get the same footage I used and talk about it, but of course I'm not going to have the same kind of reactions that I had all that few minutes ago whenever I ran through this for the first time, but I am still hyped from the gameplay. Steep Beta is available, uh, you can go and join it yourself, it is an open beta. I gave out a number of codes on Instagram and Twitter earlier on today, I had a few to actually spare, but of course they're all ran out now, but if you want to go and sign up for yourself and possibly get into the open beta, you can go to steepgame.com forward slash open beta to try and sign up for it. Of course you will need a Ubisoft account to do so, so remember that it'll be a little bit awkward, but you can try and get yourself in for this as soon as possible because it looks like so much fun! It is gorgeous. This is actually quite a gorgeous game, and I immediately have to make my comparisons to McMorris Snowboarding because it's I, I, I've played it as well, and it's kind of put me in the mood for the winter sports kind of genre. I'm a big fan of SSX. I love Snowboard Kids, 1080 Snowboarding, and some of the Sean Mullen stuff. It there's a, a fair amount of like snowboarding games that I've played in the past that have had varying degrees of success for uh, mechanics of movement. McMorris doesn't fit into that spot right now for me whenever I was playing it because it feels a bit stiff and it feels a little bit overly technical, almost like the it's skate compared to Tony Hawk's, while this feels a lot more Tony Hawk's, Matt Hoffman, Sean Palmer. Isn't it Sean Palmer? Uh, Sean Mullins? Sean Palmer? It's one of the two of them. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, come check it out. My job is to push you as hard as I can to really see what you're capable of, so... Let's just start with a little wingsuit jump warm-up, just like we talked about. The exit point's not far from here, so make your way over there. So yeah, the first thing they get you to do is like, in this snowboarding skiing game, is they get you to put on a wingsuit. I am so glad they just started with this, because if I had been a long time to unlock it, I would have been annoyed. This is something that, um, it, it just feels so viscerally entertaining, guys. I mean, just watch this. I mean, I didn't expect this whenever I was playing it. If I press the direction, I did not expect to immediately jump. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, um... It was mildly terrifying to actually like glide down this cliffside completely only like I have no idea what the controls are. I'm just flying, I'm just flying! But I'm flying! It's like a dream! It's like a dream! <laughs> this game is really immediately viscerally entertaining and looks gorgeous. I mean, um everything from the, the simple little uh wind effects, the little bit of dust in the air, the um the trees, the shadows, the light. The trail that you leave yourself whenever you're trying to climb back up the mountain after you've missed your mark. And, of course, the random laughter from your character. But, yeah, the, it, there's a, immediate, a sense of immediacy in Steep that I didn't get whenever I was playing McMorris. It feels like you immediately was like, go do this bit, go do this bit, go do this bit. It seems to actually be one of those games that just uh, wants you to play it and wants you to experience it. Rather than actually having you run through menus or building things or doing things outside of the actual like gameplay element I found that I was actually kind of getting comfortably used to the snowboarding really quickly the wingsuit really quickly and the skiing because they tend to actually just kind of run off of each other you can go from one to the other really quickly and easily the um but it's, it all takes is a single button tap whenever you're not moving to actually switch what sport you're doing but the uh even whenever you're controlling them they don't feel too different and they feel very arcadey rather than actually being overtly technical and including a ridiculous number of switches, combinations and turns, which I felt was overloaded on you in McMorris, but in this they don't even tell you how to do stunts, how to do tricks in this opening bit. They just kind of want you to like, okay, go as fast as you can down this hill. And I'm like, okay, I will. <laughs> I will go as fast as I can down this hill. Oh, you're going to put some trees in my way. Okay, let's see what happens whenever I dodge trees. Oh, I get points for dodging trees. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I'm going to have fun doing that. Let's see if I can do it faster. <laughs> so you start actually purposefully challenging yourself whenever you're playing the game rather than being guided other than waypoints. Like, you can, I could have stopped there and went, all right, I'm going to try and go around this. But of course you're not going to. You're going to purposefully kind of like throw yourself deeper into the actual like difficulty and of course here I tried to kind of give myself a little bit of air but no I immediately ended up stopping at the top and I was like oh okay then well might as well do what the guys asked me to do 
it feels like this has got a very natural tutorialism to itself. Uh, I'm sure I would learn a lot more by just playing. So by going to these different locations, uh, this, this navigation of the map feels very much like what I was doing in, uh, again, McMorris. But in McMorris you had the helicopter which kind of like limited your speed of travel and you had to let, you could drop in at any location. Meanwhile with this, it seems that you do pick a waypoint to start into. You do pick a, a spot to start at rather than anything else, which probably makes it easier for them to load up an area and kind of like controls the map that you're going to be in, which by the way seems to be the the static issue of the, we're not static issue, but the static Welcome thing of this game. Camp. These mountains are set and planned and prepared, while McMorris is a topographical map generated by a seed, the same way you would generate, say, a Minecraft map. This seems to be actually like a place, you're going to this location, everybody's going on holiday to this mountain to check it out. And that's kind of cool. I mean, I don't mind. I, I've, I'm completely okay with the idea of going to a single location for uh, a meetup. Because that way you can actually all generate your lines and actually all find your locations together. Rather than actually being like Morris where you go visit your friends, skip park, your friends, mountaintop, where it's completely unique to them. The, this seems to kind of uh, avoid the issues of uh, objects running into each other because they've, uh, out of everything that they've actually prepared they've placed all these rocks they've placed all these things in the spot they've actually created these slopes and want you to experience them and I imagine that because they have gone to the level of this detail there's got to be something living about this mountain I'd be so I'd be completely surprised if they weren't oh <laughs> bad drop if there was a um, there was something naturally changing about this mountain that they'll be able to add in future. Like if they just decide like, oh, there's been a snowstorm, bam, fresh powder in this entire section. The shape's completely different than it used to be. Check your line now to see if you can still do it. That kind of thing. <laughs> I do like the fact that you don't immediately fall off. If you crash, it's kind of got a little bit of a sloppy landing system that you can recover from. Every little bit of this feels tight. For a, like this as a beta, it feels like a tight game. I have enjoyed myself every moment playing it, uh, and this was just in the fucking around. This is like the little bit of play that I had, the, the little bit of a self-created experience while running through 15, 20 minutes of gameplay. I, I, I can, I can feel like I'm actually like n not running out of steam talking about it, but I could extol its virtues for this entire time, and I want to share like the this first 15 minutes of experience with you. Oh, oh. Oh, I completely forgot about that dodging trees. <laughs> There's something about this game that actually makes it a beg, absolutely beg, for a first-person perspective. This is a game that I could see being really unbelievably fun in VR. I mean, just those little moments where you'd actually be dodging between the trees yourself. If you're... I mean, even in my head, I'm kind of going like, all right, there's no way, no way you could translate the two move things to actually be controlling the poles while you're skiing it would be unnecessarily ridiculously detailed and very very likely to mess itself up so just using a control pad but it, it, i could see the immersion getting really really quick because of <clears throat> how how well this the speed is experienced how like how you the, the camera operates around your movement speed and every little bit of um snow flowing into your face the the wind coming off uh, the balance of your character, it, it all seems to f feel natural, you know? Uh, so yeah, whenever you're on the mountain, you can, as you're exploring, you can dig out binoculars and look around and find locations. So, uh, specifically in this bit, they're actually getting me to find a location. But the fine, funny thing is that as soon as you find a location, you can just go, bam, immediately you're there. This is amazingly useful. I mean, no matter what, you could probably jump from spot to spot to spot to spot. And once you map them all to your um, your overlay, whenever you go into the main map screen, you be able to hit whatever your favorite missions are whenever you're beating your scores of your friends or whatever else. But in, while you're just racing the mountain and you just kind of go like, oh, there's, I can spot, I can see something from the distance. I can see like that orange line being shown to me. I can just stop where I am and go right there immediately. Like, like how quick was that transition as well? I mean, there was very little loading involved. I'm, I imagine with a larger load on the system, on the servers and whatever else, and more maps and these kind of custom ones being popped up everywhere, they would maybe minimize it down and make it to stop the loading time. But that was instantaneous. I can go and just take part of a, another place in the mountain. As long as I can see it, I can go to it. Like having a line of sight to your next mission is all you need. So yeah, uh, this is my first time for running a race. And I didn't even realize 
that just by like jumping into that spot, the race was on. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> I'm not ready and prepared. I can imagine if I had slid through that area, if I had actually had a bit of momentum and managed to land there, I could have actually flown straight into this race without even breaking my stride from the last movement I was doing. And imagine like in some places, <clears throat> or in some cases, that's going to be the way to win the race because you're just in media array, you just like pull up alongside somebody and just like fly on ahead past them. But uh, even having um, a, a designed racing line ahead of me, I, you can go your own way. But the optimum racing line that they're showing is kind of really, really helpful. It kind of uh, it's helping you learn what works best in the topography of the map. I imagine it would even be slightly different for snowboard versus skiing, if just because of the the flexibility that you have whenever you're choosing one or the other. Like, I honestly thought I was going to be play, doing snowboarding mostly whenever I was playing this first 15 months, but. It, I already felt immediately comfortable with the skis. Um, it, it essentially seemed like a bit of an easy mode, really. But also meant that I could actually move forward at my own pace without having to kind of like shimmy my body as well whenever I was actually almost on flat land. Oh, there's, so, there's some spots in this where I'm just going like, oh, I'm really, I'm really, I, I don't even feel like I have control of this. I'm just hurtling downhill at full speed. Oh, so gratifying. Ooh, okay, oh, I was worried there for like to see if it was going to break my ankles. I think I know I got one coming here. Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> oh man, I, I was so annoying because you can just see, look, like that one checkpoint and then the finish left. One, one more, and then go. Of course, I'm passed. That was just that was not gratifying at all. But I can see how easy it is to actually fall behind because you aren't going to fall. Just, how you can navigate just the open peace here. now, just like just open space, just so you can ride along. This, like this open, clean, fresh powder that you can just wheel your way down the mountain on. Like, I, you can just finish a race and just keep riding. This, this is what reminds me. Like, this is the untracked level of SSX. Like that, that kind of like you just, you just keep riding. You just finish your mission and then you keep riding and go. Oh wait, I need to go back up the mountain to the next mission I was going to do. That's always, like, that, that was the most fun I had whenever I was playing that game. This is just that game personified. So, of course, going to jump on to the next mission here. And um, I caught myself off guard here because I didn't realize what it was whenever I was going to select it. I just thought, oh, this must be somewhere in the mountain I'm going to ride down. Nope. Take a wild guess what it is. It's more wingsuit. Yes. <laughs> this is brilliant. So, um, this, whenever I was playing through this moment, of course, soundtrack is fantastic for this bit. Whenever I was playing through this moment, the only thing going through my head was like, I want first person. I want first person. I want to I want to play this in first person. I want to play this with my headset on. I want to play this with a fan pointing at my face while wearing a headset. I want to feel the force of this. Because how many people are in life are actually going to go and ride in wingsuit? I think this could probably be one of the closer immersive experiences of your life if you did. Uh it's it's just that glide. So close to so close to the ground and then just pulling it up at the last minute. Um, I think I learned my lesson for like teasing that a little too many times this particular run. Oh uh, yeah, I know exactly what's about to happen here. Oh, it's so close. Up. Oh, my balls! Yeah, that didn't really work out very well for me. But a good KO to go along with it, I think. Yeah, so, um, yeah, glidey times. More glidey times. And Steep actually looks like the the most accessible and enjoyable of all of the winter sports games that came out this uh, season. I mean, Snow is a open access kind of cheaper game than this. Oh, are you serious? I thought I made that one perfectly fine. It's, uh, Snow is the, the cheaper of the three to access because it's got the lowest cost of entry, but of course is much uh, has many more objects for uh, purchase that actually like are freemium uh, content on top of this. My, while McMorr Snowboarding really, really feels like a much more technical game that pretty much makes you focus on being precise with your controls, and this is just really accessible, fun action with um, a lot of focus on camera angles and uh, playback and sharing, which is uh, a cool way of actually making use of the system. I, like I, I purposely stole a couple of like still frames and little clips from this and turned gifts out of them. The same way you can now with the um, so the recording system built into the PS4 through Share Factory, but uh, I've shared these around. Obviously, people weren't really paying attention to them, but I was happy to be sharing them because I was pretty excited about my own success in this. That was a good run, and I, I'm proud of that run. Really, I, I'm really proud of it.
I've done better though. Maybe I've got one to actually add on to this here. There's more spots just like the one you Maybe. took on in the area, but the best possible location. So we well, now I'm them. actually, uh, instead of going for another run, I'm testing out the binocular system that allows you to look around and find shortcuts and locations on the map. Now, I wasn't really seeing anything there. Is there somewhere else I need to look? Uh, screw it. I'm going to do something else instead. So I decided instead just to jump up into a higher view so I can get a better viewpoint. Now, it's even a little kind of things that are just fun to, to build into the environment here is I'm hearing the buzz of the electrical wires I'm standing around next to and it's, it's little touches like this like a soundscape that allow people to kind of like let what larger issues would normally annoy you just kind of go by the wayside like um, uh, no story campaign kind of mission to this no real kind of like uh, drive or focus to continue on it's just a good world that you want to wander around in well I'm going to finish my little wanderings for this particular video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Steep Beta. It's obviously out now because it's coming up to Christmas. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys uh, check out the game and come back to the channel any other time you're here. So remember, this was Cold Open for Passage of Skin. I want to say thank you very much for watching, and I will see all you dudes in the next video. Bye-bye. Mm, Thank you.